Good morning and welcome to Together in God, a media ministry of Grace Lutheran Church of the ELCA at 202 West Grand Avenue in Eau Claire. We are excited to share with you today God's message of love and hope for all. Please join us now in worship. Welcome on this Sunday morning. Uh, we'll hear lessons in which wisdom stands at the doorway and invites those who are desiring to learn to come and gather. And so we're glad that you have come to listen to God's word and to be strengthened by it. Please uh, rise and we'll begin with our confession and forgiveness. We gather today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, 
Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy on page 413 towards the back of your hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You think Rorick's up for trying it? Want to come up for the children's sermon? He can keep his distance. I'll sit here. Hi, Rorick. You're back again. Just to be clear, Rorick is not going to be baptized for a second time today. We accidentally printed the same bulletin insert as last week, and Colin and Marissa are not getting married again this weekend because it took last weekend, so we're happy to have you with us this weekend. Did you see the pretty windows here, Rorick? Can you see a window where the light is? See that one? That one? And that one? And that one? And that one? One, a little while ago, somebody who grew, was here when she was little, her mom, Lil Hag, used to bring her to church, and her name is Kathy. And she sits right, she used to sit when she was little, right in the same place where you're sitting now, and what she remembered most was looking at the stained glass windows. These are lots of pictures of Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. He only has one outfit, I think. So he's always in the same outfit. He's in red and white in our stained glass window. They took all the pictures in one day like people do. And then there's other people in him. Oh, that's Jesus before he got his new outfit when he was a little boy. And then I think the woman with red, this is the Easter story where Jesus appears and announce, and the angel tells him that he tells the women he's alive. And I think in the red with the long hair is Mary Magdalene. And in the purple is the mama of Jesus, Mary. And then the other one is a woman named Salome who was there too. And we have Peter... And then I think this is Ruth, isn't it? Does anyone know? And then this is some guy. We don't know his name. Maybe that's Boaz. That's probably Boaz. So, um, Boaz? So, one time a pastor was talking about people in the church that we call saints. Saints are people who God loves so much that they become loving like God. And the pastor said, do you know what a saint is? And because people had spent so much time, the kids looking at these stained glass windows, one little boy raised his hand and he said, well, there's a saint and there's a saint and there's a saint and there's three saints. Saints are people that have the light of God shining through them. That's a pretty good definition of a saint. And so today we're going to spend some time thinking about what that means, that God's light shines through people, and how it shines not just through them, but it shines on us. So that the beauty we see in the church is what we hope reflects the beauty of people that have loved us well. You did excellent on your maiden voyage up here, Rorick. Let's say a prayer. You want to put your hands together or however you do it for prayer? Holy God, thank you. Thank you for people whose light is shown to us. Thank you for Rorick coming up here with his dad, Jeff, and trying out his first children's sermon. May it be the first of many. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Back to your seat. Well, welcome to Wisdom Sunday. Uh, on the bulletin cover, you'll see those pillars. And I was kind of struck when I first read this lesson because I had no idea what those pillars stood for. And there are some various interpretations. The one I found was from the preceding uh, uh, chapter uh, before the one we're going to read this morning. And it would probably describe these seven pillars as prudence, knowledge and discretion, 
Fear the Lord, meaning hate evil, counsel, sound judgment, understanding, and then power and strength, probably not in the conventional way we think of it, but in the way to take all of these attributes and fight evil. So now for their lesson. The reading in which the author thinks of God's creative work in terms of wisdom, the divine creative power of God portrayed as woman, begins our first lesson from Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without senses, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Word of Lord, word of life, word of God. Thank you, Maddie. Maddie is a music education major, uh, going above and beyond. She's doing recitals this year, both in voice and in oboe, right? Let us rise, and we will uh, welcome the gospel singing Taste and See.
the fourth week in a row. Our Holy Gospel comes to us from the sixth chapter of John. We'll have one more week next week. I'm going to focus on the lesson that uh, Mitch read, but let's listen to the Gospel as well. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews just then uh, disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Next week's passage continues in the same theme, and so uh, we will definitely discuss that next week. But this week I want to focus on wisdom. First I'll remind you of the children's sermon that saints are the people that have the sunlight of God shining through them. I really like that image. And every so often, I invite you to pause and think about the people who have been that kind of light in your life. So I'm going to do that now. I'll give you about 30 seconds to just remember the people who have shown you light and shined light upon you. I don't know about you, but a, a kaleidoscope of people. <laughs> It wasn't just a single still stained glass window. I thought of lots of different people who've impacted me on my life, but I'm not going to share all of them with you in the sermon. But I'd like to talk about one, someone named Evelyn Strang. Uh, she was a, a geography professor at the university I taught at in Texas. In fact, she was the geography teacher. I think she taught there for over five decades. She was a wonderful, looming presence at the university where I taught. Even though her nine decades of life uh, had, had bent her over, she was still a looming presence. If you met her, she'd look you in the eyes, offer a heartfelt smile, and before you know it, you'd be in deep conversation. She would tell you about the students that she had taught, those who came to the university seeking maturity, students who gathered wisdom in her presence, teachers whom she talk, taught alongside of. She'd tell you about the way all of those people went on to serve well in the world. She would uh, be able to tell you about anything that was on the campus, any building on the campus. Oh, that building? Yeah, I was here when they built that. Let me tell you the story. She'd tell you about her travels. She was a geographer. She traveled the world, and she had a signature move she would do. Um, when she wanted to take a picture of, say, Machu Picchu, she would place her straw hat in the picture for perspective so that when her students were looking at the slide, they could get a sense of how, how big things were. She loved to talk about the places she'd been. Her kids had absorbed this from her. Her son spent a lot of time in Mexico as a pastor there. And she would speak to you also about the people she connected with there, the labor they did together. And certainly, at some point, the conversation would move in the direction of justice. She cared deeply about justice. 
She tell you about how she was involved in seeking it and the people who worked alongside her to bring that about. Evelyn rejoiced in the life she had. But with a twinkle in her eye as you were talking to her, you would see that she was delighting in you as you stood in her presence. Delighted that you cared enough to listen. Delighted that you also shared the wisdom you'd gained on your journey through life. Delighted to be connected, she would feel, to one more child of God. The sunlight shined brightly through this woman. Um, when she died, she brought in a New Orleans band uh, to play oh, When the Saints Go Marching In, and we all stepped out of her service uh, to a brisk and joyful step as we entrusted her in the hands of God. I wonder who your Evelyn was. Who were people who shined in your life? I imagine the person who wrote Proverbs, the section that uh, Mitch read to us, but also the two chapters around it, knew a wise woman like Evelyn. When he described the wisdom of God, I bet you that woman came into his mind and shaped the way he spoke. The woman would have made wise use of her own life, and he would have seen that. She definitely did not travel as much as Evelyn had. It wouldn't have been possible in that time. But her mind and imagination must have been open to newness beyond the walls she knew well. The writer probably felt delight in her presence, like, like a child in the presence of their grandparent after months of being separated. The writer would have learned that the world is a marvelous place from this witness. Even as that wise woman or man schooled him in making it a more just place. He would have seen the light of God shine through her and therefore when he thought about God he brought her light into the room with him. I wonder who your people were. I used to do this exercise regularly with my students, and their homework was, if the person is alive, give them a, drop them a card today and say, hey, pastor asked us to talk about uh, the person who was your, God's light in our life, and you were the person I thought of send it off to them, or give them a phone call. Or if they're in the room, <laughs> you could tell them. And if they're no longer with us, then tell someone else. And in that way, honor their memory. I wonder how your experiences with those people also shape your understanding of God. How when you're praying, if you imagine God as the one in whose image your saint had shined. The wise woman uh, that is described in the book of Proverbs did many things. Right? Wisdom mattered in uh, the Hebrew scriptures. 150 times the word wisdom is referred to in the Old Testament. When he described the wisdom of God, all of this came with him. The wise woman who influenced this would have also, like our saints, learned at wisdom's table. We're going to sing a song about that, about wisdom setting a table right after I'm done speaking. She, it speaks of eating the bread of teaching, drinking the wine of her wisdom. God described as inviting us in the form of holy wisdom. This is hymn to wisdom, or Saint Sophia, if you would like to hear it in Greek. 
is a poetic portrait of God's presence among us. In this moment, when the, this witness is offered, all of that biblical perspective on wisdom enters the room. So when holy en wisdom enters in, she brings a lot of luggage with her. In just these two chapters in Proverbs, she's described as teaching not in some quiet, private space, but in the public square, raising her voice, inviting people to practice prudence and discretion and all the pillars which Mitch mentioned for us. She instructs all who lead and are willing to listen so that they might lead well. And she loves those who seek her. She leads in paths of justice. And it is the creative power of wisdom through which the world came into being, we're told. She is a master builder and a preparer of feasts. When John, whom we've been listening to uh, in the Gospel readings, writes the very beginning of his book, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, he leans into these wisdom traditions. Although he uses the word word instead, go look at Proverbs 8 and 9 and hold them up alongside of the first chapter of John and you will see the echoes that are there. He is describing her as the one who was with God in the beginning and whose flesh he becomes. The Apostle Paul draws upon her image as well when he describes Jesus as the wisdom of God. It's a title he uses. I think it's good to listen to the, the broad diversity of the ways that scriptures introduces us to God, the, the, the many perspectives that uh, speak to each other through the scriptures and therefore speak to us in their diversity. Listening to this witness to wisdom's work expands our glimpse of God in ways that I find helpful. It provides bright, bright, vibrant, colored glass through which we can see God's presence shine among us. Today, Jesus Christ comes to us dressed in the garb of holy wisdom, inviting us to this table, inviting us to understand more of the mystery that is God feeding us with the bread of her teaching, inspiring us with the wine of her wisdom, gathering us so that we, so that we might become saints through whom the light of God shines. Amen.
We confess our faith in the God whom we trust using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all creation. Holy Wisdom, the world rests on the pillars of your love. Thank you for the beauty of creation and for all those who light in our lives reflect your own. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the voices we hear in the public square, inviting us to follow in their ways. May your presence be in their words. And when this is not the case, teach us to seek your true wisdom. Hear us, O God. Your wisdom is great. We give you thanks for the poets who open your mystery to us, to those who set words to music, sing them and hear them. We pray especially for Maddie as she prepares for tomorrow's recital. Let the gifts that she has nurtured shine through her voice. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. We pray for ourselves as you feed us from your table today. May all who gather here grasp in depth the bread of your love, forgiveness, and new life you are offering us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For a pastor who graciously carries a heavy burden by all that he does, by serving you and blessing us with his humble service, hear us, O God. For our church council members who help guide our church and allow us to flourish, Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Please guide and protect our soldiers who have been called to Afghanistan to help protect our embassy. And for the citizens of Afghanistan, protect them from the oncoming threat of the Taliban and for all they must face in the future. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Finally, we ask that wisdom might guide us as we continue to work up to move out of the pandemic. Be with all those whose lives are unmatched in this crisis. We pray for all whom we know whose bodies are in need of healing of any kind. We name them before you now. Hear us, O God. We lift these and all the prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, duty, and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the witness of the saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so, with all the saints, with all the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise their name, your name, and join their unending hymn. Friends, having been anointed and about to be betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as our Lord teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and power Friends, the table is prepared. This is not our table. It belongs to holy wisdom. It belongs to Jesus Christ. And therefore, all are welcome to come and join us in this meal. All who are hungry for forgiveness, restoration, and eternal life, you are most certainly welcome. Please be seated.
this bread of life we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and always. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thank you for being part of our Together in God worship service. Your prayers and financial support are always deeply appreciated. Go in peace, serve the Lord.